Good morning. I'm Bob McKenzie. I'm the executive pastor here at North Coast. And this morning we're in 1 Corinthians 13. Okay, you're at a wedding this weekend. What are the odds that they're going to read from 1 Corinthians 13, the love passage? Pretty good chance you're going to win that bet. It's a very common and familiar passage from the Bible. But as the old phrase states, familiarity can breed contempt. Being familiar with something can cause us sometimes it loses its power or its impact upon our lives. But it's a very, very powerful passage we're going to look at this morning. Now, getting into the flow of this, remember we're coming out of 1 Corinthians 12, where we're talking about the spiritual gifts. Now, that's amazing, the fact that the Spirit of God will be with a believer, fill a follower of Christ, and then you're able to do things that are supernaturally impossible to do for a human. But it's also, I think, there's a tempting side of this for ego, for status, for influence, for power over others. We've all seen it, and I think Paul did also. And I think that's why he connects 1 Corinthians 13 to the thoughts about spiritual gifts. He says, And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels and have not love, if I'm, if I'm, I'm only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all to possess, all that I have possessed to the poor and surrender my body to flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. So Paul goes on and says, if he was talking to this person, they said, but I speak in tongues, I prophesy, I I have words of knowledge, I have supernatural faith. Wow, and that's amazing. And Paul says, without love, it's nothing. And the person would say, yes, but I'm so self-sacrificial. I gave all that I had away, even to the giving my life away. Isn't that proof? And Paul says, well, apparently not necessarily. If not v- motivated from a God-like, other-centered love, then no. No matter how gifted a person is, no matter how self-sacrificial a person is, the question is, why are they doing what they're doing? Is it for God and for the sake of others, or maybe for themselves? To be noticed, power, ego, influence. So Paul lays out this litmus test here in 1 Corinthians 13, and he shows the God kind of love starting in verse 4. It's this other-centered love, and this passage allows you and I to see where our heart is. It allows me to see my foundation and my motivation. It's very, very revealing. Am I patient? Yeah, as long as you're ready to go when I want to go, right? Am I kind? Yes, as long as you're nice to me, right? And the envy, the boasting, the being proud. No, I'm not those things, as long as you guys will talk good about me. That's the point, see? A little jokingly, but we are the nicest people you will ever meet, all of us, as long as we're getting our way. And I love how God just cuts through to show our heart. Giftedness is amazing. Self-sacrificial life is amazing. But for the right reason. And without God's kind of love that's directed towards others, he says, it's nothing. So this great wedding verse that's very familiar, we want it to stay powerful in our life. Don't let the familiarity steal your thunder. It's a great passage to see where is my heart? What is my motivation? Why am I doing what I'm doing? For self? To be noticed for power, for influence? To silence the voices of inadequacy in my life? Or... Because I've been forgiven much by God, I now love much with his other-centered love, which is most important. And a final thought, remember, it's not a one-time yes or no answer. Because I just know it depends in my life upon the day, the person I'm dealing with, the situation, how much it's going to cost me. Do I maybe want to be noticed by these people? This verse is such a great daily reminder of how much I need to be with God daily because my earthly nature is extremely self-seeking. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us, you help us, 
you were helping us to work through a self-seeking heart to have a heart like yours, that we can combine the spiritual gifts and self-sacrifice with this other-centered love. Lord, reveal our hearts to us. Help us to work through those things and help us to shine your kind of love in this world that will make people take notice of you, Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. All right, God bless you guys and have just a great day in Jesus.